Hello, this is Brother James Wright, the host of the OLA Show. Today I am talking to Brother Gianni Clarkson, an outstanding member of OLA. Hello, Brother hey, Clarkson. Brother. Good, to see, good to see you. Good to see you. Good, good to see you. <laughs> you know, Brother Clarkson, you have done an excellent job in terms of being our community services awesome. chair. Could you talk about what you do as the community services chair? So as a community services chair at OLA, one of our major focuses is how do we go out of our way to serve the DC community. This happens through a lot of various things. One, it happens through amount of just the drives that we do as far as with our book drive, in addition to helping to feed homeless citizens that are inside of DC. Um, we try to find unique ways of presenting community service to not only just the members of OLA, but also to the DC community and how those things can be so beneficial to just improve the quality of life here. You know, our chapter is known uh, nationally for its community service. Yeah. Why do you think that's so? And why, we, and why do we put such an emphasis on community service? Well, dedication, dedication, dedication. Um, those things I think uh, are paramount when we talk about what community service is. Um, I always say that too much is given, much, you know, is highly expected. So what are those things? Those things mean that we give of your time, your trust, your talents. Those are things that you are consistently giving to, of course, the community. So that's what basically makes OLA's community service so paramount. And also the fact that we do it in so many various ways, uh, whether it be with our work with our children, how we help to empower schools through empowering literacy and improving Lexile scores to finding turnaround services for those citizens that, of course, are down on their luck, they're homeless. Those are things that we like to do, and that's what makes OLA stand out. So I completely am happy about the amount of brothers that come out, support the events that we do, and, of course, having such a great community to work in as well, too. You know, one of the highlight of the events that uh, we do is at Asbury United Methodist Correct. Church with the Neighbor to Neighbor Breakfast, where we basically uh, help feed mm -hmm. uh, every fourth Sunday about 300 people at Correct. Asbury. Could you talk a little bit about that? So Neighbor to Neighbor is a very unique program for the fact of not only is it just breakfast, but it's also health services as well. There is a healthy minute that is presented to homeless citizens to help them kind of be aware of various health issues that they may be experiencing. In addition to doing various tests, there are nurses that are there on site, there's a laundry service that's there on site, and also various turnaround services. The goal of any real mission is not to have people homeless forever. It's about how do we help you put, align you with those services to turn your life around so that things can become better. That's what real service is. One of the things as an educator, and we're going to talk about this mm. later on, is that you have uh, what I would call book drives. Correct. Yeah, could you talk a little bit about your book drives? Because that's so important with young people wow. here in D.C. Be an educator. Um, reading, you know, leaders are readers. And there are so many unfortunate um, school libraries that are just way underserved. We're talking about outdated books. Yes. We're talking about t pages torn out. Yes. And books that have just been damaged from series of movements. So, one of the things that we did with OLA, with our book drive, is to go into our community and find people that are interested in donating books at beginning Lexile level, levels and in various interest groups so that, therefore, kids are reading things that they are interested in, which, of course, improves overall comprehension, and you become better in overall subjects as well, too. So that book drive is very paramount, and I can't wait to do another one because it's the best of it. But the last thing is that we make sure that uh, we write a special letter inside the cover of the book so that students see that this book was given with care and given with love. You know, it's interesting that you say that because the literacy level here in the District of Columbia, mm -hmm. as you know, even though there are many universities, right. many educational institutions, is quite high, Correct. particularly in communities east of the Anacostia River. Uh, has OLA through your programs helped to try to alleviate that, particularly with the children? Absolutely. So uh, before the name change, we worked at Orr Elementary and we did a, uh, we read books to students yes. that we have uh, given to. We were at Burville Elementary where we uh, collected books, brought those books to the school and of course read them to the kindergarten first and second grade classes. And what happens is that when, you know, um, sadly, if you're in an underserved community, you have very, very rarely had an adult read to you. Yes. And, yes. you know, what yes. does that do to you? Yes. It really helps you understand that reading actually is important. And how, how am I, as a 
student able to basically ch turn things around, understand that reading is important, and become more actively involved in my schoolwork. Well, you are an outstanding community services chair. It. And the only thing, brother, I can say is keep up the good we'll work. We'll do, we'll do, we'll do. It's, a, it's one of the major reasons why I am part of this amazing fraternity is to give back to my community because I understand how important it is. And it's something that I plan to do until God calls me home. <laughs> Amen. Uh, thank you definitely for your input, uh, brother, it. on that. And we'll be right back to talk about why Gianni Clarkson or Brother Clarkson decided <laughs> to become a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated. Thank you. 